In this tutorial we will learn how to operate our robot using a smartphone. We will make two programs. For a controller, that is smartphone, and for a robot. Using smartphone as a controller could be convenient since you don't have to buy any additional equipment and you can make any interface as you like. In this tutorial we will use a smartphone with Android operation system. To create an application, we will use Android Studio. Android Studio is the official integrated development environment for Android app development. Go to the developers page of Android Studio. Click download Android Studio Giraffe. Scroll to the very bottom of this page, check the terms and conditions checkbox and click download Android Studio Giraffe for Linux. It will take a while before Android Studio will be downloaded. When downloading Android Studio will be complete, move to the Android Studio Editor tab. Here we can find instructions how to install Android Studio. Firstly, install required libraries. Now move to the Downloads folder. Extract tar archive files using the tar command. XF option means that created folder name will be the same as in the initial tar file. Now move to the bin directory. Execute the studio shell file. When you execute Android Studio for the first time, there will be several steps to complete. Basically, here should be nothing difficult. Before launching, Android Studio will download several files. Click Finish to complete the installation. Now we can use Android Studio. Let's see the code for the controller. Download the 4WS controller zip file and place it into the Android Studio Projects folder. Then, extract it. Move to the bin directory inside the Android Studio directory. Execute the Studio Shell script. When the Welcome to Android Studio window appears, click the Open button. Choose the 4WS controller folder. The code will appear. If the code does not appear, you can display it by clicking on the file names that appear when you click on the small arrows on the left side of the monitor. Also, if cannot resolve symbol activity error occurs, click on add dependency on Android activity and import and Android Studio will automatically download required libraries. Click on the activity main XML file. This file contains user interface design. From the palette menu we can place various components such as buttons, switches and text boxes. We can also specify layout from the layouts menu. The white region represents smartphone screen. Basically, we just have to drag components to the white region and drop them. By choosing the code tab we can edit design by writing XML code. By choosing split we can see how design changes as we change the code. But generally, most of the time we use the design tab. By clicking on the component, we can make detailed adjustments. We will use ID in Java code. So, it is important to set it so that it will be easy to understand what is the role of this component. Under Layout menu, we can specify distances between components. If the application is meant to be used in multiple devices, these distances should be chosen carefully to avoid clashes between several components. Now let's see the Java code. 
Here we import required libraries. On create function is called when the activity is starting. This is where most initialization should be done. Find view by ID method is used to find an existing view in our XML layout by its Android ID attribute. In other words, this method connects user interface and our Java code. Here, we are defining a timer. We will use the timer to send commands to the robot periodically. In these lines we initialize shape, color and joystick position. In this part, we are getting coordinates of a point which user touches on the image view. Then, a circle is drawn to imitate joystick movement. Here, we define a listener which enables a user to choose a device to connect to when the user pushes the button. In this part we define a listener which begins a serial communication with the previously chosen device. Here, we define a timer class which periodically sends data. Note that we are sending coordinates of the point which user has touched on each image view. Also, here we recalculate the coordinates so that the maximum value will be 1 and the minimum value will be minus 1. Just the same format that Joy node outputs. This part of the program now shown on the screen is describing Bluetooth communication. This part will be the same for most programs which use Bluetooth. I will not explain it here, but you can use it as library. Open the Android manifest XML file. Here, we should write Bluetooth related permissions. This is required so that the program can access Bluetooth and begin communication. Now let's test our application. Firstly, we will use emulator. The device that will be emulated is shown here. There is a broad variety of devices that can be used, so if you have a particular device in mind, you can download it. Click the play button. After a while, application will appear. We can move joysticks just as we would do it with real device. But a limitation of emulator is that we cannot use Bluetooth related functionality. To stop the emulation, click red square. To install this program to a real device, enable developer mode on your smartphone. Connect the smartphone. Here, the model type of your smartphone will be displayed. Click the play button. If installation completes successfully, the notification message will appear here. Now we can use this program on the smartphone. Let's see the program on the robot side. Firstly, we have to install required libraries. Install lib Bluetooth dev. These are development files for using the Blue Z Linux Bluetooth library. Upgrade pip, setup tools and wheel. This is required to avoid errors while installing Python libraries. Setup tools is a collection of enhancements to the Python dist utils that allow developers to build and distribute Python packages more easily. Wheels are a component of Python ecosystem that helps installing packages. Install BlueZ. To install the version that works with Python version 3.10, we will install it from GitHub repository. BlueZ is the official Linux Bluetooth protocol stack. It is an open source project distributed under general public license. We have to make several modifications to system files to do successful Bluetooth communication. We have to set Raspberry Pi to run Bluetooth in compatibility mode. This means that Bluetooth will be backward compatible with lower Bluetooth versions. 
Move to the Bluetooth target once directory. Using Nano Editor, open the Bluetooth service file. We have to modify this line. Add a hyphen C to the end of this line. Then, write out. And close the file. Finally reboot the Raspberry Pi. Make sure your username is in the Bluetooth group. If it's not, Add your username to Bluetooth group using this command. Change group of the var run sdp file. The change group command on Linux changes the group ownership of a file or directory. We are doing this to be able to execute Bluetooth communication without sudo privilege. Move to the system directory. Create a var run sdp path file. Then open it using Nano Text Editor. Add the setting currently shown. The settings are in the Google Drive, so just copy and paste them. Save this file and close the Nano Editor. In the same directory, create a var run sdp service file. Just as we did previously, Open it and paste the settings. Reload the daemon. This command will rerun all generators, reload all unit files, and recreate the entire dependency tree. Enable path and service we previously created. Finally, start it all up. After these operations, Move to Bluetooth target wants directory and open Bluetooth service file. Under the line we previously modified, add this line. This line sets permission so that the user can read, can write and can't execute. We have completed all file modifications. Now we are going to pair smartphone and Raspberry Pi. Type Bluetooth CTL. Bluetooth CTL is an interactive and easy to use tool for controlling Bluetooth devices. By using scan on command, we can search for Bluetooth devices that you can connect to. On your smartphone, go to the Bluetooth menu. Turn on visibility. The MAC address and smartphone name will appear in the terminal. Copy the MAC address. Using the pair command, pair Raspberry Pi and smartphone. Confirm passkey message will appear both on Raspberry Pi and smartphone. So, confirm it. Load serial port profile. Review the output of HCI Tool Dev for all your system's Bluetooth devices. Use HCI Config to configure Bluetooth devices. HCI 0 is the name of a Bluetooth device installed in the system. Note that you have to execute the HCI Config command before Bluetooth communication. But we have to execute it only once. Let's see the code on the robot side. Download the Bluetooth project zip file from the Google Drive and extract it to your home directory. Move to the scripts directory inside the robot control package. Open the robot control Bluetooth script. In the commander class, we control a four-wheel steering robot using Dynamixel servos. 
This code is specific for the four-wheel steering robot that I have shown in the beginning of this video, so I will not explain it here. Bluetooth communication is done in the BLT subscriber class. Here, in the first line, we create a socket for connection. RFCOM is used as transport protocol. In the second line, bind function binds the socket to a local address and port. In this line, the socket listens for incoming requests. Here we set a universally unique identifier. In this program, UID that we once created using the UUID4 method is used. In this part, we are advertising a service with the local software defined perimeter server. A software defined perimeter is a way to hide internet connected infrastructure so that external parties and attackers cannot see it. Here, the socket accepts the connection. In this line, we are defining a timer which will try to receive data from a smartphone every 20 milliseconds. In this part, received data is decomposed by regular expression and is stored in the array. Here, target velocity for the robot is calculated. Note that we have to convert received data from string to float type. Now we are ready to run the program. Open a new terminal. Move to the Bluetooth project directory. Execute the Colkin build command. If you have not executed HEI config command yet, open a new terminal and execute it. Now, run the robot control Bluetooth Pi script. When the listening message appears in the terminal, Push the Select MAC address button on the smartphone and select the device you are going to connect to. Then push the Connect button. Raspberry Pi will begin to receive data from the smartphone. As Virtual Joy Pad is being moved in the smartphone, we can see that data is successfully received on the Raspberry Pi side. 